Who else are those messages for? James? Us. For us, right? Because Jesus said, Jesus said, listen to what I'm saying to the churches. Then, so John has wrote the things that he saw, and he wrote the things that are, and what's the next thing he needs to write? The things that are going to happen. The things that are going to happen. Now, how many of you can write out things that are going to happen? Can any of us write out things that are going to happen? How will we know what's going to happen? I could say, tomorrow there's going to be church. Well, that's kind of easy, right? But could I say, tomorrow the pastor is going to preach from Exodus in church? The only way I would know that is if I talked to the pastor before, right? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Who, who, does anybody know what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to happen next year? Or what's going to happen in 20 years? Does anybody know that? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Not even an adult. The only person that knows what's going to happen in the future is the person that knows everything, right? And that is God. That's right. So, John was on the Isle of Patmos, and in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, the beginning of it, Kayla, can you read out loud? Loud, loud. All right, stop right there. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. So John was there. He had just finished writing the things that are, and he looked, and a door was open in heaven. And I think the Holy Spirit showed him that door because we've looked up in the sky, and we've never seen a door in heaven. But John saw a door open in heaven. I don't know what he thought. Maybe he thought, Jesus is coming back. Remember, he saw Jesus go up into the sky. He might have thought, Jesus is coming back from the sky. In fact, Jesus, the angels told him, Jesus would come back the same way that he left. And so since Jesus went right up into the sky into heaven, he's going to come right back from heaven through the sky to earth. Maybe John thought, the door is open and Jesus is going to come out the door. But you know what? That's not what happened. Uh, he heard a voice that said, Come up here, we'll say. It said, come up hither. Come up here. And by the Holy Spirit, John was able, in the Spirit, to go up through the door. And what do you think was on the inside the door? God was there. Where is God? In heaven. In heaven. So John got to see heaven. And he wrote it down for us. And when he got through the door, the very first thing that grabbed his attention was a mighty throne. And he wrote down what it looks like. And I don't know, I wouldn't draw it like this, but I don't know if I could, I don't know if anybody could draw out what John said. I don't even know if John could really say right out what he saw. But the first thing that John saw when he went through that door and he saw heaven was a great throne. And on the throne was tremendous, bright, dazzling light. It wasn't, it was just light coming from God. It was God's throne. And the light was there, it was bright. Can you see something else that's coming from the throne? Yeah. What, do you, what else do you see that's coming from the throne? Lightning. Lightning. That's right. There was lightning and thunders. Those kind of represent that God is a judge, and he sends out his judgments um, on people that need to be judged, that are disobeying him, that don't regard him, that don't obey him. So John saw the throne of God the Father, full of brightness because God is so holy and so righteous that we can't even look on him and his judgments are going out like lightning and all the way around the throne is this circle now John called it John called it a rainbow and it is a rainbow the Bible called it a rainbow but this rainbow is different there's two things different about this rainbow Okay, first, first, when you think of
of a rainbow, what do you think of? What do you think of, Abby? The colors. The different colors. There's seven colors in a rainbow. In the rainbows that we see. Anyone else? What else do you think of when you think of a rainbow? From one end to another. From one end to the other. If it's a full rainbow, it's like here to there, right? Okay. Anything else you think of with a rainbow? What do you think of? What? A leprechaun. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. What's at the end of the rainbow? Oh, I didn't play on that, that's for sure. But, yes, a leprechaun. Anything else we think of with a rainbow? What? That the colors in the rainbow mean something. Okay. Well, so, this rainbow, though, is one color. The Bible says it was a rainbow that was emerald, which is green, and it was completely around. Now, when we say full rainbow, we say like from this point on the earth all the way over to this point on the earth. But this rainbow in heaven, that's only, when we say a full rainbow, that's only a half a rainbow, isn't it? This one goes all the way around, all the way, a complete circle. This circle, does it ever end? No. No, it just goes. You can't ever tell where it stops. Because it doesn't, it just keeps going. And that's like God. God is eternal. Has he ever, did God start one day? Was there a day that God was born? Nope. Is God ever going to die? Nope. He has always been. He's just continuous. Always been. And he's faithful. If he says something, he's going to keep doing that. And he's always going to do that. So this picture of this sight, vision of God's throne reminds us of God. So, after John saw that, he kind of looked around a little bit, and he saw other thrones. Okay? So in heaven, there's this great throne, great throne where God is, and around God's throne was more thrones. Smaller thrones, there was 24 thrones. And on these thrones were people, and they, these Elders, the Bible calls them, older believers, people that are that believe in God and were saints. Well, not saints the way we think of saints, but they believed in God. They were Christians. These, what do you see about these these guys on these thrones? What do you see about them? Look at it. Don't say out loud. Look at it and, and think of something that you notice about the guys on these thrones. Okay. So, remember what you're thinking of, and let's have Chloe, what do you notice? Crowns. How many notice that they have crowns on their head? Yeah. They have crowns on their head. Okay. And do you notice anything else about them? What 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 did you notice, Manny? Their chairs have clouds. Well, that's it in heaven, so it's kind of just representing that they're in heaven. Their chairs, these are thrones. They're thrones in heaven, and they have cr crowns on their head. Abby? They're in a circle. Okay, so they're all the way around. They're all looking at what? What are they all looking at? The throne. At the big throne. They're all looking at God's throne. I'm going to tell you the other thing. They all have white. Their clothing is white. Now, you might not remember, but last week and the week before, when we talked about the things that Jesus promised, those that believed on him, three of the things that he promised, those that would believe on him, one was that they would walk in white. These guys have white, right? Another was that he would give them a crown. And these guys have crowns on, don't they? And another was that they would reign, or they would rule like a king, with him. And what are they sitting on? They're sitting on thrones. So does God keep his promises? Sure enough, he does. He's a faithful God. He keeps his promises. And right there, this is in the this is in heaven. Those believers that are in heaven, they're seated there. They have believed on Jesus, and He kept His promise to them. He clothes them with white robes. He gives them a crown, and they're ruling from those thrones. So John saw. He walked. He got through the door, and the first thing he saw was the throne. Then he looked around the throne, and he saw more thrones. 
24, 24 thrones, 12 <laughs> plus 12 thrones, and these thrones represent or have representatives of all people who believed on Jesus and believed on God are represented on these thrones. Then, and this will be the last thing we talked about this morning, he saw between those, in front of this throne, seven lamps. Okay, now we don't use lamps like this anymore, but these lamps, this is like a container with oil in it, and it's got a wick, and, it, and it, you light the wick, and it's a lamp. You carry it around in the dark, it's not dark anymore, because it's a lamp. So if we study the Bible, lots of other places talks about the sevenfold spirit, talks about the, the oil of the spirit. Uh, when the Holy Spirit came in Acts, cloven tongues of fire came in what looked like that, rested on the top of people. So these seven lamps represent the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? God. He's God. Okay, so right here we have God, God. Yeah. The Father. Yeah. So right here we have God the Father. And right here, this is, represents God the Holy, Spirit. the Holy Spirit. So is there any more of God? Yeah. Who's the other person? The Son. God the Son. And we're just going to have to wait to see how Jesus is represented in heaven. So John saw God in heaven. And this is, um, we cannot comprehend all of this. But you know what? So God is in heaven. God is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is everywhere, and God is so great, but God, God says that he will live inside each of us. Could God live inside a person? How could, I mean, the heaven doesn't even hold God. How could he live inside a person? Fly. He fly? Well, we can't understand God, but God said, God teaches us in his word that those that believe on Jesus... Those that turn from their sin and have their sins forgiven by God when they believe on Jesus, God comes and lives inside them. Now, we don't ask God to come and live inside us because he hasn't told us to do that. He told us to turn from our sin and believe on Jesus. And then he said that when we do that, he comes and lives within us. And so when we are going along and we want to do something, and all of a sudden we feel like we shouldn't do that? Who's telling us that we shouldn't do that? It's kind of inside, maybe in our stomach. In our, Who's telling us that? God. He's inside us, telling us, don't do that. Now, if we say no, and no, and no pretty soon, we don't hear him when he says, don't do that. But God, who lives in heaven, can also live inside each of us. He only lives inside those who turn from their sin and believe on Jesus, and trust Him to save them from their sins, those people, God lives inside them. So, I don't want you to answer out loud. I want you to think in your head. Does God live inside you? Yeah. Don't answer out loud. Think in your head. Does God live inside you? He only lives inside you if you have turned from your sin. If you say, I don't want to sin anymore. I believe on Jesus. I want him to forgive my sins. I'm trusting him to save me. If you turn to him, then he does live inside you. If he lives inside you, are you listening to him? Or are you just doing your own thing over and over? You think Jesus wants us to be mean to one another? No. No? God doesn't want us to be mean to one another. And so when we're doing wrong, if you're doing wrong, is God telling you to stop doing wrong? better be listening if he is, right? 